Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 29th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today in inspecting some of the latest uh, malware that was trapped in some of my honeypots, I came across a crypto coin miner that did things a little bit different than sort of your traditional miners. First of all, this particular miner does check if the CPU has support for the AES instruction set. So essentially AES encryption is built into the CPU. Many modern CPUs do provide this feature. And this particular attacker will download a specific version of the miner that does take advantage of this feature, increasing the hash rate. In addition, this particular miner does adjust the number of threats that are being set up by the miner to half the number of the CPU cores available, probably not to overload the CPU and to remain more stealthy. WebAssembly, or short WASM, has been showing up in browsers over the last year or so. And yes, there are some first applications that take advantage of this new feature. WebAssembly is essentially bytecode compiled JavaScript, so it's more compact and is also supposed to execute faster. At this point, of course, one of the very prominent application of WebAssembly is some of of these crypto coin miners that, that are used in these ever popular crypto jacking attacks. Now, once you run into WASM, the next question of course is, is it possible to decompile and analyze these scripts? Turns out it's not really all that hard. The Chrome debugger will take care of it for you. So really not that difficult. Now, there are a couple of practical issues with this. For example, function names will be gone. Instead, each function just has a number. So the code may be a little bit more difficult to read than looking at the source code for the particular application. John Bergbaum from Forcepoint has written a real nice blog post about WebAssembly, how to analyze it and how it sort of works. So if you're into web application security, then certainly take a look at his blog post. I'm talking about fancy things you can do with your browser. One of these recent CPU vulnerabilities, Spectre, was exploitable via the browser. And well, browsers as a result uh, did implement various countermeasures. Spectre essentially relied on an attacker being able to detect minute timing differences in commands as they execute. So what browsers did was that essentially they added random delays to certain functions to make the timing less predictable, preventing Spectre from being exploited. Or at least uh, that was uh, the idea. In a blog post, uh, Noam Haddad and Jonathan Affek from Aleph Security are looking in more detail at these mitigations. And what they essentially found was that yes, those mitigations help, but they ultimately do not prevent the attack. They just just slow down the attacker. And that's what typically happens when you're adding these random delays. The random delays, well, uh, they can be taken into account by just running the same exploit more often, sort of averaging out your results. So yes, the attack is slowed down, uh, but it's still possible. On the downside, well, uh, the normal code is delayed too. So there were a number of complaints that these spectre mitigations actually did cause too much of a performance hit for some web applications. And Gentoo Linux today announced that its GitHub repository was compromised and code was altered. Apparently around 8 p.m. UTC on Thursday, an attacker gained access to the organization on GitHub and then was able to modify a number of files. Apparently the intent of these modified files was to delete all files on systems that are using these files to build their version of Gentoo Linux. 
Now, luckily, Gentoo just uh, used GitHub as essentially a mirror of their main systems. So the actual code on Gentoo operated systems was not compromised. They now completely removed the Gentoo organization from GitHub. Not sure if it'll come back anytime soon, but uh, certainly be very careful if on Thursday you downloaded any Gentoo code from GitHub. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember with the holiday next week on July 4th, we'll have a little bit an abbreviated schedule for next week, but there should be a podcast at least on Monday and Tuesday. We'll see for the rest of the week. If you like this podcast, then by all means, please leave a comment on iTunes or any other site where you download this podcast from. And as usual, tell your friends about it. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.